Well, it all started actually over lunch uh, with Susan Jira at the New York Times, and we were talking about book projects, and it just came up that, you know, the New York Times has not done a major cookbook since, the, since 1961. I'm Amanda Hesser, and I'm a longtime food writer and editor for the New York Times, also the co-founder of Food 52, and I'm the author of the Essential New York Times Cookbook. So I, I put a little, I posted a little author's query uh, in the newspaper and got this incredible response. Thousands of readers emailed me, wrote me, sent me their tattered newspaper clippings from two decades ago, you know, the rest, and told me about all of these recipes that they had been cooking forever and, you know, how, how they had changed them and tweaked them and what they loved about them. And so that actually created the foundation of the book. What I did actually was I you know, collected all of these recipe suggestions and then decided to test any recipe that was recommended by three or more readers. And that was 400 plus recipes. So ultimately I, I tested 1400 and then curated it down to it, uh, the, the thousand most noteworthy. I didn't update the recipes. I really saw my job being to unearth great recipes from the archives that people uh, wouldn't find be able to find themselves. The recipes from 1940 and earlier, I had to kind of write them as recipes because like the 1940s recipes were written in paragraph form as part of an article. So you wouldn't get an ingredient list and the instructions would be kind of vague. And then in the, in the 1870s, 1860s, those recipes were really just, they all came from readers first of all, which was fantastic. So you knew what people were sort of were cooking at home then. But they also tended to be, you know, two or three lines long and just, they would kind of list ingredients, but they wouldn't tell you what order to mix them. They wouldn't tell you the cooking time, the pan to use. I mean, it was really, um, there was a lot of sleuthing. So I just essentially kind of translated those recipes and made them accessible to the modern cook. The way I arranged the book now is tr very traditional cookbook. You know, there are dr there's a drinks chapter, there's an appetizers chapter, there's a chicken chapter pasta chapter, desserts, and then within those chapters, the recipes are chronological because I wanted you to be able to kind of see the evolution of American cooking, um, see how we went from, you know, uh, pot de creme to creme brulee to uh, panna cotta. I wanted each chapter to feel like its own adventure.